welcome back or welcome for the first time. This is Brie Michelle Made. I'm Brie and this is about what I make. So today I we are playing a little game of tag over on YouTube and I've been tagged. I'm it and I'm here today to share my five handmade essentials. So Teresa of Lost My Thread tagged me. We've been becoming friends, um, yeah, mostly through YouTube, but like also over on Instagram. Um, yeah, she's one of my favorite sewing friends. We haven't gotten to meet in real life. She's over in the UK. I'm here in the Netherlands, but we both came over, like we're both American expats that came over for love. So yeah, we love to talk sewing stuff, of course, but also about how much we miss craft mac and cheese. And um, yeah, so she is super cool and I absolutely love her makes. She is she has done some really, really fun uh, sewing series and um, her refashion Me Made May was absolutely amazing. So definitely go check her out as well as Sarah um, of Naughty Gnome who started this little game of tag. So I am super excited today to share my five handmade essentials. So to specify Sarah's original prompt, uh, the five handmade essentials are a top, a bottom, some kind of one piece, so like a jumpsuit or a dress, a layering piece, and then a wild card. So the wild card could be um, any of the other four categories, like a little duplicate, or it could be um, like an accessory or some other kind of wardrobe piece. Initially, when I was thinking of the five essentials, I kind of thought about pulling like, what would, if I could only have five things out of my wardrobe, like if I was traveling or something and they needed to be top, bottom, dress, layering piece, and then like one extra. I thought about like pulling those from my wardrobe and kind of doing like a little capsule wardrobe or like travel wardrobe. Um, but ultimately what I found is that the pieces that I really love don't necessarily go together, but they go with tons of other things in my wardrobe. So I'm not necessarily thinking of essentials as like, what would I take with me if I could only take those things, but rather like what are the cornerstone pieces in my wardrobe that help me create a lot of different looks and a lot of different outfits. So starting with tops, um, I have picked one of my favorite blouses. So I have a couple of chalk and notch Ren blouses. At this point, I think I have, I have three in my closet now, but I've made the pattern a whole bunch of times. It is like for me the best fitting woven blouse pattern and so at this point I'm just like transferring all of my like style ideas onto that pattern because the fit is really good. So this is my third hack. Um, for this one I added a square neckline. I eliminated the button placket mostly because I did not want to deal with doing buttonholes in this uh, embroidered, well this broderie anglaise. And then I also modified the sleeve a little bit. So the long sleeve view, um, this part here connects to like a lantern piece and then you have a traditional cuff. I didn't do any of that. Uh, I just added some elastic and I think it is like the perfect amount of volume for me. I like that it's not a huge poof on the shoulder, but then there is like still some body in the sleeve. Now I did just make this one. It's pretty recent. I made it in April but I have worn it so, so much and it goes with so much in my closet. So I don't feel like just because it's a new addition, like it's not just because it's new that I'm including it in this little roundup. It goes with so much. I love that it kind of has like a 70s peasant top style and it's totally up my street. I like that it has um, like some nice volume from the cotton and yeah, it just, it goes with so much in my wardrobe. I wear it with most of my skirts, um, yeah, I just think like a white blouse is so essential. I haven't had one in my wardrobe in like two years and I am so, so excited to have one again and I've been wearing it nonstop. So next up is bottom pieces. So I have picked my favorite skirt. I didn't think that I was a skirt person until last year and I made this Natalie skirt it is from Forget Me Not Patterns. I made it in a stretch denim. So I sized, I sized down to accommodate like the stretch, but it is the most comfortable piece and I love it so much. I think it looks so like streamlined and cute. It's got these little like panels. Um, so there's one, two, three, four. There's eight panels in this skirt. It's got slash pockets, which I love. And then it has a really nice like 
smooth A-line shape and I really wanted to take that in like a 70s direction so I used these big um, tortoiseshell buttons that are super cute and yeah I feel like it I don't know it really like bridges where I want to be with like comfy but casual but still like elevated so I feel like I can just throw this on with like a t-shirt I can dress it up with a blouse and it still has that like chill but put together vibe so I absolutely love my Natalie skirt um, this one I did just resize it um, as part of my alteration challenge for me made may so I took the waist in a little bit and redid the waistband totally worth it I am really excited to be wearing this again all summer I wore it last year like probably like twice a week like that's how much I love this skirt I wore it so much and I'm really excited that it fits me again and I can't wait to wear it all summer long so the next category was a one piece so that could be a jumpsuit I don't have any jumpsuits but even if I did I think that this dress would still be the winner so this is the Meg dress by Steamwork. It's also the one that I am wearing today. Um, this one I hacked to have a long sleeve and this one I just placed the elastic a little bit different than how the pattern goes but I really love all of my Meg dresses. I have four and they are the best. Um, I picked this one though because this is one that I wear like all year round. So even though it is long sleeve and kind of a darker color, the fabric is super, super light and swishy. So even when it's warm out, like I can stay pretty cool in this. It is a viscose, but it's like a super fine viscose. Like it, it was one of my favorite fabrics, not my favorite fabric to work with. It, it was tough. <laughs> it was very high maintenance um because it was like it's so fine that the machine just really wanted to eat it um and yeah it like wanted to stretch and warp and fray but on my skin this is like it is absolutely one of my favorite fabrics to wear it is one of the things that i reach for in my closet all the time i love it so so much and yeah the design i've made the dress four times i just think it really like suits me i really like how um it's adjustable because of the little drawstring here it has two rings of elastic that come in at the waist so i just and then like a nice a-line skirt which i think it doesn't feel too big um it just like really softly drapes and doesn't give me like that weird column feel that i get with like a rectangle skirt so this is my favorite dress pattern for sure, but um, if we're talking wardrobe essentials, I wear this one year round, so that one takes the cake. The next category is layering piece, and I got a little cheeky with this one, partially because as a layering piece, I don't have, I've only made a couple of cardigans and I don't love them, to be honest. Um, so I don't, and I don't really reach for them, and then I have yet to make a jacket or a coat. But I do have a layering piece that I wear like several times a week and that is these little undershorts so it is a layering piece it just layers under and not over so yes I feel a little bit cheeky but even if I had made like a jacket or coat or cardigan honestly I still might save save these because they like are such a lifesaver for me in the summertime I also, they're great for sleeping in. So they're just little knit bike shorts. This is my first pair that I made just from like rubbing off a pair of ready to wear um, bike shorts that I had just like, they, they were so worn. They actually like were threadbare. It was coming apart. I'd had them for years and I was like, I have a couple knit remnants. I just need to take these apart, added some seam allowance. And so I made these ones. I also have used the Seamwork K pattern and the Seamwork Wallace to make up little bike shorts. They're basically the same. Um, the Wallace comes as a romper and then I added a waistband to it, but they're basically the same as the Seamwork K, which is actually a pair of bike shorts with a sports bra. Um, so I recommend both of those as patterns. I also really want to try the 
Dulce, I think it's called, from Muna and Broad. So those ones are special because instead of having, um, you might see how like worn out these ones are. These ones probably need to be replaced. I wear them the most because they are almost the same color as my skin. <laughs> like it's, it's a very, very soft pink. I think it's coming up a little lighter on the camera than it is, but it's like a really soft pink. That's almost my color. Anyway, um, so these have an inseam, just like regular. The cool thing about the Dulce is that you actually have a gusset that goes just along the whole center of the crotch. So you, if you're someone that's sensitive to seams on your inner thighs, like those are spread out, which also helps uh, the longevity because like I said, these ones probably need to be replaced very soon. Uh, yeah, they're definitely stretched out and like getting, getting a little threadbare. But yeah, I would say this is one of, Bike shorts are like one of the most important garments in my wardrobe in the summertime um, because I have thick thighs that rub together. So if I wanna wear dresses and skirts, I do have, um, like I've gotta wear something underneath. I have started trying a like anti-friction stick. I have the Mega Babe one and that one is pretty good. I do like the feeling of that for days where I don't want to wear something under it. But honestly, I just like feel more comfortable wearing shorts under things anyway. It's super windy where I live and I just, I love a short skirt and I really like not having to worry about anything. So I usually just go for some little shorts underneath. I'm wearing some right now, um, my latest one, which was the Seamwork Wallace. But yeah, so I'm a little cheeky with uh, these as my layering piece, but I totally stand by it. Last category was wild card. So I have gone for a repeat of the top section, um, the top category, um, to do a t-shirt because I could not live without t-shirts. Um, and this is my absolute favorite one. I made this up in February, January, I think. And I wear it at least once a week. Um, it's not the most summery color. It's definitely like a bit more wintry with this really dark green. I want to get a couple more made up really soon. I don't think I said it already. This is the Helen's Closet Dawson top and I made it in a bamboo jersey and it's just like my favorite combination of being fitted but not clingy. Like it definitely like skims my body really nice for like a close fit, which is perfect for pairing like with skirts and high-waisted jeans. Um, so it like tucks in really nicely, but it doesn't feel like it's like tight or compressing or clingy or anything. It's just like such a good combination. I did make a Dawson top in cotton jersey and that one felt too tight. Um, but in this like bamboo jersey, I think it, because it's like more drapey, yeah, it just like, it's so perfect. I wanna get a couple more colors and get some made up in the summer. I love the elbow length sleeve. For a shirt that I wear like this often, I don't have any photos of it. Um, it's a little bit silly, but yeah, I really love this one. I also like that I put in um, little, it says pedal to the metal. It was one of the uh, Kylie and the Machine labels from the calendar, the advent calendar this year, or the countdown calendar this last year and yeah i just really really love it like i said i wear it all the time and i definitely need a couple more of these so those are my top five handmade essentials they are my wardrobe cornerstones um pieces that i have really loved wearing and building outfits around so thanks again to sarah for uh starting this little game of tag um i wanted to first uh, tell you guys, like if you want to tell me what your top five handmade items are, it was really fun to go into my wardrobe and think about like, oh, what are, yeah, what are my cornerstone pieces? What are my essentials? There's lots of ways you can interpret like five essentials, but yeah, it was really, really fun. So if you want to tell me what yours are, I'd love to hear it. You could even like go find me on Instagram, send me pictures because I love chatting. Yeah, all things handmade, wardrobes, I love it all. And then number two, I am going to be tagging Valerie of what Valerie makes. So she started her YouTube channel um, early this year, I think, uh, in January. And she's just such a delight to watch. Like, I have lots of 
YouTube sewing buddies, but uh, Valerie is one of my favorites. I love to put on her video when I am like getting into project mode and just like, you know, kind of pretend that like we're chatting and we're sewing together. <laughs> um, she makes gorgeous stuff and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just delightful. So definitely go check her out. That is all for me today. I think I'll be back next week with some sewing flops or a fabric haul. I'm gonna do some recording, um, yeah, later today. So we'll see, we'll see which one comes first, but uh, yeah, that's what's, that's what's coming up. Uh, so definitely subscribe if you're not already, and you can give this video a like if you want. Um, and definitely, again, go check out Sarah of Naughty Gnome, Teresa of Lost My Thread, and Valerie of What Valerie Makes. So that's all for me today. Until next time, happy making. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,